Um, listen, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna kind of like switch gears a little bit from um, from a um, macro level to to a, a, to a very focused case of um, of complexity, right? Um, it's, uh, it's, I'm going to tell you a story, a story of the of the um, of the business environment that that demands um, a level of complexity in, in, in software um, and and everything that stems out of it, and 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 uh, perhaps as, as as we proceed in with this conference, um, some of you at least could, could could keep that sort of story in mind and say, what would I do in my quality assurance approach and what I, the way I. Um, you know, there's like uh, testing of the back office, test of the front end, but this is all together. How would I approach this particular problem um, as a as a almost a, a sick case of, of software complexity um, that's needed to solve a very complicated business process? All right, so I'm I'm gonna um, learn how to use this. Um, um, let me guess. Oops, excellent. So um, pictures. Um, I, th I think there's a button here that has a yes. There you go. Right. So this is, this is the. Um, can you hear me? Um, so this is the overall kind of like picture of our um, production core um, looks. Um, the um, we have three trading systems. We have three major markets: equity market, FX market, and derivatives market. Um, each of them is comprised of the of the actual trading, the matching part, um, and um, and the real time and clearing risk. So we we are one of those exchanges that has this tight vertical integration of the, of trading and clearing. Few exchanges do it this way, um, and I'll explain to you why. There's a reason for that, right? And we have three of those. Um, and recently we built the integration layer, which is built on. You no, know, it's a fairly um, um, common approach these days. It's a, it's a data grade integrated service bus, um, which then feed into everything else in the post trading services and, and the gateways for clients to access, um, and and a sort of like a big risk management, the kind of stuff that you run um, at the end of the day. Um, and here's your collateral management, right? So th this is your core production stuff. That's where the orders come in. That's that's how they come in. Right, that's where you match them, and here's how you do the um, real-time clearing and risk. And we're going to talk about this um, this piece because that's that's really that's really the case, right? So I'm going to switch to the next slide, uh, and uh, I'm going to first tell you what we do and how it works, and then I maybe um, say a few words about why we do it. So your 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 typical. I'm not going to name names, like because um, I think each of you will have um, a um, an idea of an exchange that actually runs in this model, right? So your typical thing is this: um, orders comes in, um, they come in, they they get matched in a in your in a matching engine. Um, you generate a trade. Trade one way or another gets into into your um, essentially end of day clearing. Sometimes you can speed up this process. You do the the mini batch, um, but it's a it's a there's really no uh, connection between. It's only flowing this way, right? Um, that's your traditional um, thing. You, you can say that, like, you know, could, this could be, I, I don't know, DTC, right? A more sophisticated model is, um, is, is where there's a more of an um, interaction between your clearing risk and your trading. Uh, again, your orders come in, uh, they get matched, uh, you, you generate a trade, trade falls into your clearing and risk. Um, there's something here. That that looks at the at the trades as, at the as, as they form position, form portfolios, form risk. You know, once you trade it, you create risk. And if by any chance um, it so happens that your your last trade um, broached the collateral that you posted as margin, um, you either call somebody or maybe electronically send a signal back and say, you know what, no more trades from this source because because they already passed their limit. Of course, that last trade could be uh, millions of pounds, and uh, and if it's a robot, there could be millions of <laughs> trades. So you could be you could be in in the red quite deep, right? Um, and I'm sure you, some of you know which exchanges operate in this model. Maybe some of yours. Um, <sighs> this is what we do, and it's 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 painful. Um, I'm, and I'm going to have to guide you through this picture. 
So here comes the order. They come cheerfully on both ends. Um, and they think, oh, we're going to match now. No, you're not going to match anything. First, you're going to make a trip here. Um, and, and here runs our risk system. It runs in real time, where, um, where you get vetted. Uh, and it's not the kind of um, you know, pre-trade um, order sanity check where you look at the size, you look at the frequency, you look whether you, you conform to a, to a price band or whatnot. You're, you're kind of like general health stuff. So, okay, the, key, the keyboard is not stuck or the robot hasn't gone crazy. Now, this is a true um, portfolio risk algorithm that takes the order imagines that it actually got matched. It actually formed um, a position. That position joined a portfolio of position that you're already carrying. And then we're gonna run this, this algorithm of ours and we're gonna say, do you have enough collateral to cover this hypothetical potential exposure? Um, and if you don't, um, I say, no, that order has to travel back where it came from, somewhere there into the ceiling and back to the... Um, it's only if, if if that, that part says yes, only then that order is allowed to, um, to, to join the match, and, and then you go through the normal process when it actually trades. The kicker is this. That thing accounts not just for the actual positions that have been accumulated. It also looks at the state of the book. It, it sees at the marketable or close to execution orders that are sitting on the book to evaluate the risk. So it looks at the total picture. It, it's, the, it's the positions that you have. It's the orders that you have hanging. And it's the incoming order that you're about to add to that mix that get accounted. And it's, and it's not a trivial algorithm. It's, it's fairly, it's, it's, it's not the most complex, and I'll talk about that. Um, but, it's, um, but it's a real portfolio thing, like, like span-like thing that actually does it. And of course, this whole process sits in, in, the, in, the, in the incoming flow of orders, that's, um, which means that to be competitive uh, with, um, say, dollar C, um, we, we cannot really go beyond a millisecond. In fact, we, we do the, we complete the whole process in about 400 microseconds. So that's, that's the technology that we run. Looks beautiful, right? Um, why is it beautiful? Why is it needed? Um, I may have it on the next slide. If I don't, uh, no, I'll go back. Um, why, why are we doing it, right? The, um, the, uh, the, the landscape, the, 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 the ecosystem of, of um, financial services in Russia um, is, is different. Um, the, um, the brokers, the, it's, it's not that huge, right? So brokers need to capture the entire value chain from, uh, from, you know, from uh, client introduction services to research, um, to execution, to clearing and financing the trade, right? I, I like the, yeah, yeah, a, a cheerful, like say US or UK model where well, one broker just does the research and client acquisition, another broker does the execution, uh, and, third, uh, and, and few brokers actually decide to be self-clearing because of the complexity, operational complexity, and the, 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 you know, the capital requirements that come with that. Few people decide to do it. In Russia, pretty much everyone does clearing, trading, uh, client relationships, marketing, whatnot, right? They need to do all of it, which means that we have a lot of undercapitalized under brokers that are in the, in the, in the clearing pool. Um, and then, of course, in that same trading space, they meet the, the giants of the industry, like the spare banks and, and the Vitebez and the Critias. Um, so we need to assure that in the anonymous trading environment that whoever you're gonna meet in that murky pond will, uh, it could be a small fish, but that fish will, will, will fulfill its obligation, right? So every order that, that that little broker brings into the market will be executed and it has enough coverage on the collateral side so it can be done. That's why we create the assurance in the market. The system is really what created a, a rather dynamic trading environment um, um, in Russia today. And uh, remarkably, um, if you look at the events of the 2014 and and and, uh, and early 15, when uh, when you know when the can uh, the currency devalued by I don't know. Uh, 150 percent at least uh, when the economy. I'm not going to say collapsed, but uh, nearly collapsed in, in the, well, all those events. I'm sure you're aware of it. The, the, the market infrastructure, um, not, nothing would happen to the economy, but the market infrastructure withstood this shock. And sometimes there were like daily shocks uh, uh, similar or worse than what happened when the Swiss franc, for example, um, appreciated. We did not have the Alpha rate experiences, right? We didn't have the failed brokers. We didn't have the 
um, emergency waterfalls um, kicking in at the, at the clearinghouse. Um, we, we actually with, withstood all those shocks. This, this, we descended with the market, but in a, in a graceful and order, um, um, orderly manner. All beautiful, right? Works great. Now, next slide. Now the bad things begin, right? Um, so the, the benefits are, um, are clear. I just spoke about them. So it creates even playing field in a very di diverse participant environment, clearly. Uh, it preserves market integrity uh, during shocks, exactly. Um, um, well, one thing I forgot to tell you is that we don't do it not just for, for our accounts, not for the clearing accounts that the, that the participants. We actually do it on a client level. So in fact, we do it on the level of the, of the sub-portfolios that, that, that brokers run for their clients. Um, which is a lot to, to say. It's a lot of work. It's again because the brokers are weak, and and a lot of a lot of brokerage uh, business that we came in, um, got in, um, we got on a on a, uh, on the premise that look, you know what, you're not going to build your own technology. You're not going to be able to buy you know Calypsos or Murexes or what's not to um, um, to run all this stuff. We're going to give you a box that does it for you. We're going to uh, manage your client risk facing you as well as your risk facing us. So that it's all there. That's a good part. Now the red part. Um, because we have to do all this, remember 400 microseconds is, the, is, is our limit. Um, it, it limits the complexity of the, of the risk management um, algorithms that we, we, we can employ. We cannot go too sophisticated. Um, um, algo similar, say um, Brazil uses the, um, the, the liquidation type of algorithm, the, the, the core, right? We cannot use it in real time. It's, it, it's too slow, it's too heavy, right? Um, um, a typical HR-based uh, algorithm, probably not gonna be um, suitable for this kind of task. So that limits us. It also limits the scope, right? So um, remember, again, I'm going to flip back to the first picture, right? We have three, hi, hi. Um, we have three trading stacks here, right? I would love to do the cross margining between the three, you know, um, reduce the, the financing requirements, collateral requirements. Um, um, it's difficult to create a true cross margining solution um, because once your portfolio becomes so complex, your algorithm is not going to run in 400 microseconds. So the scope of, 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 of application of this technology, it, it's limited uh, by the business process. Um, that's number two, it's right there. Um, the third, and that's the topic of this um, conference really, it has the horrible impact on our stability, right? So um, the, the, we, in, in our model where, uh, again, I'm gonna flip to this line, right? In our model, we have, uh, we have a very tight coupling between trading process and clearing and risk process. So this green part is easy. Trading systems are easy. You're trading widgets. The you know, security identifiers place, placed in a book, they have a single attribute price. You match them. It's not that complex. They, they, there are implementations of trading systems on, on, online. You can get them on the internet, right? What we have now in real production is far more complex, but in the end, the complexity of trading and risk um, is much higher than, than complexity, I'm sorry, the complexity of uh, clearing and risk is much higher than the complexity of trading. Because here you have the full articulation of the product. You finally understand what is that that you traded, right? You expose to the, its full life cycle, its events, the dividends, the, uh, the, the valuation, the, um, you, in clearing, you, you deal with events on, on a different time scale. So all trading systems, Operate on the same time scale. You you have fast flow, fast transactions, fast orders. You just match them. You're done, right? It's all measured in microseconds. Here you do have those risk checks that need to run in, in, in microseconds. But you also have the slow operation. There's a client who wants to bring in additional collateral. That's a that's a human time scale transaction, right? All of a sudden they begin to collide inside of the single engine, and that's where what you get you get the race conditions, um, and that's where you get the outages, right? Um, besides, um, trading systems are very stable. I mean, people don't introduce new types of auctions or new types of orders very often, right? It's all been invented and, and used. What, what is there that you can invent, right? Um, clearing changes all the time. It has to follow the regulation. It has to follow the market. Um, it has to follow the e economic environment. Somebody introduces um, a, a, a new type of swap to be traded, and all of a sudden, all of that... This system doesn't care whether it's a swap or, or a stock, right? This system does, 
right? So in our in our case, um, about ninety five percent of the change measured by by modification requests that go that logged into our um, code tracking system, um, actually here. That's where the change is, and of course, where the, that's where the change is. That's where it breaks. <clears throat> well, in this model, if this breaks, this thing continues on its own. In this model, if this breaks, this one continues on its own. In this case, if it breaks, oops, order comes in. It never, it never gets a response. It never gets into, into trading. Trading system is sits there all by itself. And so listen, I can trade, but I have nothing to trade. There are no orders coming in, right? I have to shut down. So if you look at the um, at our history of outages. Practically all of them um, are of that kind. It's the it's the it's the fault in the clearing and risk component in this thing here, right? Um, that forces us to to shut down trading. We can, we have to we have to restart and fix clearing in order in order to trade. Um, it's not something we can fix in technology. It's not a technology problem. They, um, when I came to work in Moscow, it, it was like, oh, when 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 are you going to do something about technology? Listen, this is baked. Uh, in, in, in genes, right? This is, this is a logical dependency. No matter what we do, no matter what we do, we're going to be less reliable than somebody operating in this model, right? Because this is always going to be more complex and more mutable than what's here. And they're linked logically. They're linked through the business process. They're also linked by technology, but it's for, first and foremost, it's a business process linkage. So I'm going to go forward. So that's our that's our um, that's our thing. That's that's what um, um, all of you please think a little bit. How would I solve this problem? How would I what would I do in terms of software quality assurance in software te uh, testing in like um, you know operational procedure maybe a production setup to somehow you can, you can, you cannot negate this. You can mitigate it. You can try to mitigate it. You cannot negate it. But at least you can you can reduce the impact. Um, that's not the end of it. I'm going to talk more. <laughs> what do you think, right? Um, so our solution, um, it's the it's the it's the architecture solution. Um, um, it's, but it's um, which will lead us a little bit away from from pure software quality issues, right? But um, you know, not, uh, to break the suspense, I have to tell you what is that that we're doing now, right? So what we're doing now, we we effectively splitting. Um, the risk check into two into two um, stages, right? Um, we have a, a front component um, that essentially um, um, checks the incoming order against uh, limits that are just lodged um, in the same in the same system, right? Um, if the order passes, it falls into the match. Right. In fact, well, sorry, I'll, I'll, the press is a little bit different. The order comes in, branch goes here, asks, uh, is this order valid? <clears throat> it's checked against the limit, and I'm going to talk about this limit more. If it's good, it's traded, and then it goes into the real um, risk check and clearing engine, which continuously recalculates the exposures. And as it recalcul recalculates them, it updates the limit here. So you introduce a bit of a lag in the system, so these limits are not necessarily reflecting the true state of risk accumulating. There's a lag of maybe a second or so, um, but we feel that system, that sort of structure is gonna work reliably enough and well enough to solve more or less all of the problems that we have today. Um, for one, this can be done much faster um, than, the, than the heavy risk algorithm. That can be done in, I don't know, in picoseconds, right? Um, we can use more complicated, more sophisticated risk algorithm because we're not we're not really in the in the incoming order path anymore, right? Um, and um, and we can now actually extend this to cover all of our trading stacks. So this could be a cross margining solution that covers all the market that then distributes trading limits to specific trading stacks in each market. So that that is the solution that we um, that we're going with. Um, that is what IT has in their minds, in our minds. Um, business is skeptical about this because the, the, um, uh, there's a habit of absolutely precise, up to the second, up to microsecond, um, verification of condition of collateral and margin collateral for every incoming order. So um, part of my job now uh, is actually convincing uh, my guys on the business side that this gives them a, a, a level of control of a risk that's more than adequate 
um, for the kind of environment that we have today, right? Um, I'm not going to go into the details of, of that conversation because it's, 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 it's a saga. <laughs> it's, uh, um, but let me go to the next slide. <clears throat> so this is really more for, the, um, for your information since we, we, we talked about technology in general. This is, this is where we, that's where we go um, in our system development overall, right? So this is where we are now, right? <coughs> we, have three, um, we, we have three independent mar market trading stacks. Um, um, equities, effects, um, derivatives. Um, when we're done, when we're done with everything that we do, right, um, we're going to have this um, three trading, still independent trading components, um, each accepting orders through its own mar market access mechanisms. Um, those are difficult to change because um, because they're linked to what what um, um, to what brokers market participants already deployed. As, as you know, the most difficult thing is to change the uh, the the market access protocol. You can change trading systems, you can change clearing systems, but if you try to change the fix to a new version, the uh, the world just you know goes up and down. Um, we will have a a a large cross margin risk that covers all the markets. That gives the that that gives a huge impact um, um, in terms of um, trade costs to our participants. Right. That that that's that's a major thing. In some accounts, it, it reduces the, the, the collateral requirement, the margin requirement by 70%, right? Um, as, as this thing churns, right, and, and this, this little cycle of recalculation of risk, that takes about two seconds now. So every two seconds, actually in a continuous thing, as a continuous stream, we're going to be updating the limits for the, for the order pre-check. So the order pre-check is still based on information coming out of the, out of the portfolio management system right here. Um, but it's, it's running in real time, it, it's running in cost in real time, and again, the beauty of it is, is that and if this thing goes away, if it dies, right, because that's where the complexity is, remember, right? We still have limits here, so we can continue trading and just continue cashing trades at this level and just restart this part, and then j just dump all the accumulated trades onto it. So that solves our stability problem as well. So that's the, that's the, that's the architecture of the of the core technology stack, and that's 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 where we're going. You, um, um, you know, th this is our essentially roadmap in in, uh, in twenty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> um, all right. Um, it's um, it's supposed to be a keynote speech, but um, and I'm not supposed to take questions. But if you have questions, maybe ask them now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's it's to be decided, right? It, it, it's um, uh, again, my goal as technologist is not to make that decision, but but give the business tools, so they can make those decisions, right? So the the easiest thing to do, and that's what we're going to do, is that we're going to attach a little widget to the side, manual control, where where a head of operations who runs the markets says, oh, um, a very large broker is about to run out of their limit, right? At which point he just makes a decision: Should I a, add uh, two million dollars to that, or say, you know what, they are ready to risk it? That that's the manual control. So it could be uh, it could be minutes, it could be hours, depending on what what um, um, what our. So usually when something happens, we have this, all these people in, in one room sitting, and we just make those literally split second decisions. Somebody is dealing with the press, somebody is dealing with uh, with investors, somebody is dealing with the participants, and somebody actually making those decisions. Well, thank you so much. Uh, hope it was interesting. And, uh